Hi everyone and welcome to this presentation of beeswax, uh, a little project of mine, a pollen-friendly document templating language. Um, it's a privilege, provisionary name. Um, it's uh, something that's not revolutionary. I wouldn't be surprised at all to learn that somebody else had done something similar, although I couldn't find it when I looked. And I absolutely would not be presenting it here if the words amateur night were not in the title for this event. Um, but I think it is a nice example of using language language oriented programming to achieve some small improvements to a particular type of workflow. Um, beeswax is also not finished yet. I still haven't put it on the package server or written any documentation for it. And I'm looking for feedback on how to improve particular aspects of it, uh, as you will see. So um, let me just unpack the description a little bit. Uh, we're talking about templating in the sense of any situation where you have uh, a set of data um, that's kind of a prototype for an artifact and you want to interpolate some variables in there um, to produce that artifact like a web page or a PDF file or an MP3 file. And Pollen, of course, can be used to produce any of those things. And, of course, you could be using your own Racket programs to produce any of those things. The original use case for beeswax is uh, in the context of a pollen project, but I envision that it could be adapted and useful uh, for any other program that needs a document templating facility as well. Uh, you may not be familiar with pollen, um, and regardless of whether you are or aren't, I think I'll just take a few slides here to describe at a high level what it is that pollen does and how it works. And that is also the best way to kind of uh, show you the so what for why beeswax um, exists. At a high level here you have, um, I can just highlight it here actually, this is the pollen source file. It's a document that's also a racket module. It's uh, written in hashling pollen typically, although it could be written in any racket language that provides um, two values. That module provides a doc, which is an X expression, and metas, which is a hash table, uh, usually used for metadata about the document. Pollen then uh, offers a way of creating its own, its own template kind of facility. These are uh, essentially text files that have some racket code sprinkled in, and um, to combine these two things to get your file, you use uh, Pollen's command line interface using Rayco Pollen Render, the render command. It uh, looks at your, it finds your source file, it finds your template for you, marries those two things together using some code here to produce an HTML file. I'm doing incredible violence to, Pylon's, to, to Pollen's rendering process here, um, but essentially uh, it takes that template and includes it in a um, kind of a synthesized module and then runs eval on that module at, at runtime to, uh, to get the result, which is that, um, that HTML file in this case. Um, what I have on the screen now is a pollen template. This is a template from my, um, one of my pollen projects. I didn't mean to have the REPL there, so, um, so obviously on this recording, but there you go. Um, you see at the top there, there's some there's some racket code. We also have um, some racket code sprinkled through here, but mainly this file contains HTML with some racket code in the middle of it. Um, there's not a hash lang line at the top, and so you know, it, racket Doctor Racket in particular and um, Racket in general doesn't really necessarily know on its own what to do with this file. It's not a self-contained piece of Racket code. You could get into the weeds about what is and isn't code um, in a philosophical sense, but within or from a Racket perspective, you'd have to say that this actually is just a text file that um, happens to contain some code that can be uh, interpreted as Racket code uh, given some additional context. Uh, the facility that Pollen uses for um, bringing these 
templates in is called include template. It's kind of an interesting function. I'm just mentioning it here. It's provided by Racket's web server package. Um, and it, uh, it just lifts kind of the contents of any text file into the current um, spot in, in, into that spot in your source code and just makes that part of your, makes those expressions part of your code generally. So um, what Pollen does is it includes that, ev that, that included code within the context of an eval. Um, so the templating, again, remember, we're here to talk about templating specifically. What are we um, noticing about that template? Well, like I said, it's not a Racket module, um, which in a Racket project has some implications. Tools like Dr. Racket don't really know um, what to do with that file. The uh, syntax highlighting is all wrong. You can see it thinks that this here is a, is a comment. When really, it's just the tail end of an HTML entity. Um, there's no uh, extra buttons up here that you would get in a normal pollen program for inserting a command character. You don't get any definition arrows as you hover over different pieces of the code. It also can't on its own be compiled. Um, and there's, there's some speed implications to that, which I'll talk about later. Now, technically, um, when using include template, it normally could be compiled, but because Pollen includes that within an eval. It, it never does get compiled when using as a template in a Pollen project. So how does Beeswax propose to change or augment this scenario? Um, well, all I'm really interested in altering is the, the template portion. Uh, let's take those template files and give them a hash lang, in this case, Beeswax template, and make those template files proper racket modules. Uh, we would also then give it a kind of a more, more normal racket file extension. And um, so now we have a template as a racket module. What, is, what code does that racket module provide to other racket modules? It provides a function which uh, can take the doc and metas and render them into the template for you. Um, the Rayco pollen render command line interface no longer or does not have any awareness of this new scheme, obviously. So we kind of have to come up with a substitute for that as well. So um, what I propose to do is uh, make my own Rayco beeswax render that will take source documents and marry them up with beeswax templates. Um, rather than e running eval, it will dynamically require that render function and pass doc and metas into it to get that HTML file. Let's take a look at this pollen template again. This is a template from uh, a pollen project where I'm kind of um, abusing or extending, you might charitably say, pollen to make a blog uh, rather than a book. Um, it wasn't really uh, designed with blogs in mind, but it can be used for blogs uh, rather well, as I found. Um, to convert this pollen template into a beeswax template, we simply add hashlang beeswax template at the top. And at that moment, you may have just noticed that a few things happened. The syntax highlighting all changed. It's now correct. Um, Racket, um, knowing the lang that's being used here, uh, has a reader that can determine, you know, which of these things are strings and which are uh, function calls and other Racket code. Um, I'm hovering over the, um, the variables that are here. You can see I get these definition arrows. Um, and also, you can see I have a, oops, sorry. You can see I also have a, uh, a new toolbar button up here that it can be used to insert a command character. So um, that is what, that's kind of the first consequence of converting this into a beeswax template with just that one change. If I run this, get rid of my highlight there. Um, uh, and I type the word render to see what render is. Render is nowhere referred to in the text of the code you see above, but um, hashlang beeswax template converts all of that content into a function called render. If I try calling that function, um, you can see it's a three arity function. I need to pass it three arguments, and if I pass it three numbers, 
that function also has a signature um, where it expects on any hash table a page node, which is essentially a a, a pollens thing. It's a a, uh, a file string in symbol form, and it will return the bytes of the rendered document. Uh, let me just uh, synthesize a call to this with a dummy kind of document here. So there's a doc, and for the metas, I'll make a hash that includes a title, since the, the template expects to find um, a value with that key in the hash. And I'll just give it um, out.html as a page node. And you can see it gives me back the bytes of the rendered results. Um, it's a little bit busy, but you can kind of see over here, it's inserted my title here. Um, all these fav icons come from um, a variable that, that is in the template. And uh, yeah, so that's our rendered document. Um, here's a sort of a simplified template, and we're, I'll just talk about how Beeswax transforms that template into a module in a little bit more detail. Um, it's designed, again, to be a drop-in for a pollen template so that you can um, access all the same uh, things that a pollen template could. Um, you could also uh, require other Racket modules into this template, um, define functions, and make calls to those functions. And um, with a little bit of color coding, you can see what uh, beeswax does to turn that into the render function. It looks through the whole body here and finds any require forms and puts those kind of up at the top of the module so that you can, they're, they're in a good spot for, that's where requires kind of have to go. Um, it also looks for any define forms and puts those at the top of the render function that you see here. And then it gathers up everything, all the rest of this. Um, the green is kind of strings, and the blue is escaped racket code. And it gathers those all up in orders and puts them into um, this list here. And the function essentially uh, concatenates the bytes, the byte equivalents of all of these values. And saves them to the, the file called here, and then it also returns the bytes um, of that file. The astute reader will have noticed some um, gotchas, or a gotcha here, which is that the order of operations can be changed. Um, obviously, I can't have defines going into the middle of this list, or, or and so I put them at the top of the function. Um, that way, they still have access to the values of um, these arguments. But if, for example, you had a call to a, a function, let's say you changed a parameter and then later defined a variable that depended on a, the function call to that parameter, um, you would have problems because the define would be moved um, up to the top uh, before the parameter was changed in that case, and then the parameter would be changed further down in the list portion of the code. I'm not sure necessarily what's a great way to handle that, so um, that's one area where I would be interested in feedback. This is a screenshot of the actual module begin um, macro, and most of the work that's being done is in this form splitter uh, function that splits all of the expressions into top level defines and body and then you can see they end up down here um, top top level stuff here defines at the top of the function and then the rest of the body inside the list um, I'm going to talk about a potential other benefit of the beeswax system and uh, that's why I'm throwing all this gnarly stuff right up on your screen here um, I also kept the quote that immediately follows it in the original documentation I lifted it from. I know that only the serious nerds are still with me, but let's review what's happening here. This is a um, example from the Pollen documentation of a method for creating PDF files from Pollen by way of LaTeX. 
And so uh, here's the pollen template uh, for doing that. And you'll notice um, about this, there's no surrounding text content. Normally uh, with a template, you could you could just start typing and whatever you typed gets included as strings in the, in the final result. And then you escape into racket code from there. Well, here it's all escaped racket code. And to me, that seems like um, it's a lot of code. It definitely works, and that's pretty much still the method that I use, but it's a lot of code to be putting inside of a, uh, a template, considering that a template can never get compiled and isn't really able to, um, it can never get, I'm just drawing a blank here. Well, in any case, it, it's, Sort of, it feels like an abuse of the template system uh, in some fashion. Um, with beeswax, what you could do, really, um, you wouldn't necessarily uh, have a good reason to put hashlang beeswax template at the top of this, but you could make it hashlang racket code. Um, and if you did that, put all that code inside of a definition of a function called render that takes those same three arguments, document is and, uh, and here, and then just provided that function, the beeswax rendering command line interface would be able to use that racket module, the same as it does beeswax template modules. Combine those and you'd get your PDF. This is all just um, feels like a better, more, kind of a more cleaner way of thinking about templates. They, they exist as racket modules, they provide functions, they can be reasoned about in the same way as any racket module. Um, another aspect of this whole framework is that, um, going, talking more about the general purpose possibilities, if you were not even using pollen at all, you could um, simply use beeswax template modules and um, use their render functions to produce the, the documents that you're inter interested in. Um, Okay, so here's where compilation becomes important because if you spent any time with pollen or the more time you spend with pollen, I'd say the more you start getting interested in um, helping it to render documents more quickly. Um, and I intuited that using a, a racket module would be faster than um, using a pollen template that gets evaled every time. But uh, I wanted to verify that intuition uh, with some measurements. So this is the, the measurement that I devised. Um, I have a gist out there for this. And um, you can see a link to that in the um, GitHub repo for the project, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, pollen exposes a render function here. And normally pollen would be hunting for the template to use for a particular source file. But in the interest of giving it um, getting the best possible measurement of just the rendering step. I'm giving it the template file here so that it uh, doesn't have to go hunting for that and that work isn't included in the time measurement. Uh, I applied this test to that um, to the big uh, template that you saw here. This is the same template here being used. Um, and it does some work to ensure that the doc and the metas for the source document are cached but the, the rendering, the final rendering is not cached, so that we're just measuring the rendering step. Um, for some reason, pollen was a bit slower on the first run than it was on the second two runs, but um, if you took just the average of the second two runs, you're looking at about a 58 times speed up there, which is pretty significant. Um, there's also, uh, on the other end of the spectrum, this is probably the simplest possible pollen project. Um, I'm just kind of uh, echoing the contents of these files onto the onto the terminal, so you can see um, the, the just how simple it is. There's a very simple templates there, and the only difference between the pollen template and the racket and the uh, beeswax template is the hashlang at the top of the beeswax template. You can see um, pretty significant speed up there as well. Um, on subsequent runs on my machine, pollen did get as low as 418 milliseconds of CPU time, that first measurement there. Uh, and if you took that against the beeswax time, that's about a 48 times speed up. 
So uh, what's next? Um, I just have to implement the beeswax rendering command line interface, uh, which included with that will probably be also a bunch of work to uh, duplicate Pollen's parallel rendering capability, which allows you to use all the cores in your machine to render documents simultaneously rather than um, doing them one at a time. And uh, there's maybe a discussion to be had about an additional hook into Pollen there because another thing that Pollen provides is a local web development server so that you can preview your Pollen documents in a web browser running on your machine. And that system also does not know anything about beeswax templates. It would be nice, I speculate, to have Pollen um, offer a way that I could supply it a function that would uh, have its own method of marrying source documents with with templates rather than using its its own native functionality. Uh, I'm not sure if that's something that Matthew Butterick is interested in implementing, but it's something I um, might bring up if it, if it continues to make sense after advice and further cogitation. Um, a hashlang beeswax template base would be nice so that uh, if people are using beeswax with projects that don't want all the same pollen affordances, they then they can avoid that overhead. Right now a beeswax template auto requires three pollen modules as well as a pollen.rkt file if it finds one. And um, you may not need any of that functionality in your project. So a, a, a base template hashlang would avoid that for you. I'm not married to the name beeswax. It's just the first kind of pollen adjacent word that occurred to me when I um, decided to write this thing and so I think it could very very well have a name change at some point in the future but I haven't thought about it very much and uh, finally I may um, implement a hashlang beeswax snippets which would be um, what the name implies uh, templates for parts of a document rather than an entire document so there's a possible um, syntax that I cooked up just for this presentation it might not look like that but uh, you can see that it would obviously just be a um, sugary way of describing functions that spit out strings from lists of variables. I don't know if there would be um, a lot of advantage to that over, say, just normal racket functions that return X expressions, but um, maybe there's something there. And with that, uh, thanks, and I'll be looking forward to any discussion. This is the GitHub repo for the project. And there's my contact info. Thanks for watching.